phone representatives, those who spend most of their days on the phone with donors, serve in a vitally important role as they are the first line of communication with your partners. Recruiting and hiring the right people is critical. Today, we're going to learn the qualities that are non-negotiable when seeking out the best of the best. Grab a pen and paper and your laptop and stay tuned. A little more than a year ago, I was conducting the second interview on a very promising candidate for the position of mid-level representative, those individuals working with partners that give between 1,000 and 5,000, whose major responsibility would be calling donors regularly. This candidate soared through the first interview with flying colors, and I was looking forward to how she would respond to the role play section where I would play the part of the donor and she the caller. I was excited because she seemed to be very warm and friendly with an outgoing personality and seemed like she would be a natural on the phone. We started by giving her a scenario. In this case, we had a new program that needed funding and she was to sell a pretend program to me, the donor. To my great surprise and the surprise of the two ladies, our mid-level team leader and the HR rep, the woman who was so outgoing simply froze and didn't know what to say. There was 90 seconds of very awkward silence as she didn't muster a word. I felt so bad that I tried to help her unpack the program and what she could sell to me. But her brain was just simply couldn't come up with anything. Frankly, it was one of the most awkward and sad experiences of my life, but I can only imagine how she felt. After three attempts to help her come up with some conversation topics, we simply had to cut off the role play and explain that this position probably wasn't the best for her. She didn't argue because I believe she realized that our assessment was correct. There are four qualities that make phone representatives successful in fundraising. This is what to look for when recruiting callers for your fundraising efforts. Quality number one, commitment to the cause. Every nonprofit starts with a mission and most have a cause for which they're fighting. It's critical and makes sense that the board and senior leadership agree with that cause because they're leading out and making decisions about the direction of the organization. But it also makes sense that those enlisting friends and funds for the organization are also committed to the cause. As someone who's been committed to the cause of an organization for nearly 40 years, I can tell you that it's very difficult to sell something you don't believe in. Yes, there are nonprofits that hire fundraisers or hire guns to raise the necessary funds for the organization to exist, but most donors can see right through someone who is not genuine or is just going through the motions. They know when someone is committed and essentially saying the right things, but not genuine. I've hired professional fundraisers who only take on business to make money. You can see that's the case because they help both sides of an issue. But in order to really go deep with a donor or a partner, you need to connect with them at their level. And that includes believing deeply in the same mission, cause, or issue that they do. Over the years, I've often contemplated offers to work for organizations willing to pay a hefty price for a director of development. However, in most cases, the mission is not related to my heart or passion, and I'd find it difficult to embrace and sell others on something I've not my committed my life to. As I've hired full and part-time callers whose sole responsibility is to start and grow a relationship with current donors, I've looked for people who have the same or similar passion for the mission that I have. Quality number two, good listener or communicator. Listening to the heart and the passion of the donor or partner and understanding what they're communicating to us about their beliefs is essential to fundraising and development. Those calling reps who are in sync with the passion and heart of the donor raise significantly more than those who seem to always miss where the donor is coming from, especially those reps that understand that as much is not being said 
as is being said. Partners really share a lot about their giving interests and desires if we simply listen. Equally as important as listening is being able to communicate effectively. Simply knowing why your organization exists and what you do is not enough. The message must be communicated in a compelling manner and one that would motivate the donor or partner to give. Communicating on the phone is no simple task. Oftentimes, it's more difficult than in person. Donors or partners often need to have things explained in detail, and since the visual component of a conversation doesn't exist, communicating verbally is important. Most studies show that 50% of humans are visual learners, while the other 50% are auditory learners. If your donor's an auditory learner, your job is much easier than if that person is a visual learner. A good communicator is able to paint a picture with words and through storytelling when that's needed. Quality number three, warm, friendly, and engaging. It's a remarkable phenomenon, but your personality and presence comes across the phone lines to the donor. A warm and friendly personality and engaging nature seems to reveal itself even over the phone. When a caller is good-natured, smiles a lot, and is positive and upbeat, that rubs off on the person on the other line. If a caller is frowning, distracted, negative, that also comes across the phone lines. Whenever I interview a candidate for a phone rep, I always include a role play just like I mentioned earlier because I want to know if their nature is warm, friendly, and engaging, or does it seem like they're struggling to find things to talk about during the conversation. An ability to make people feel good about themselves, the organization and their giving is very important. Successful phone reps are those that keep the conversation positive and upbeat. Quality number four, ability to ask. As important as it is to have a commitment to the cause, be a good listener or communicator and being warm, friendly, engaging, those qualities will only get a rep so far in the process. Relationships are the key as well as the foundation for any long-term friendship, but the real success factor for a phone rep is whether they can move someone to action. Without a doubt, that includes giving of their finances, but it also includes challenging a current or prospective donor to opportunities to give of their labor influence and expertise. I've known countless reps who've been tremendous at building relationships and long-term friendships, but could not get over the barrier of closure, getting someone to move to action. It may be a fear of rejection, fear that the person would be insulted, or simply that the rep had a fragile self-worth. Either way, they just couldn't get over that all-important hurdle. The good news is that the ability to ask can be easily taught to most people. What can't be taught is relationship building and genuineness in sharing thoughts and feelings. Those kinds of people tend to be extroverted and asking comes naturally, almost as if it's hired, hardwired into their DNA. That doesn't mean that I haven't known introverts who are good at asking. It just doesn't come naturally. It drains them at the end of the day. For extroverts, talking to people all day energizes them, and that's important when hiring a caller who will be with you for the long haul. Recruiting the right people with the right qualities is essential if a rep is going to be on the phone four to eight hours per day, five days a week. This person is a representative of your organization, is your first line when it comes to communicating and conveying a message and opportunity. A caller can be on the phone 30 to 90 minutes or more with a donor or partner two to three times or more per year. And it's critical that you enlist the right people to perform these tasks because they're spending a bulk of their time with partners. Don't make a mistake in hiring the wrong person for this exceptionally important position. I hope you found this video and the contents helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below letting me and this community know your thoughts on these. 
If you feel I missed any quality, please share that with me in the comments section so that we can help our entire community get better. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends and colleagues. There's no cost to you that the more subscribers we have, the more this message gets out through YouTube, out to others, and the more we can all share in the wealth derived from our collective experiences. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.